Would you like to introduce this episode, Murray? Oh, okay. Sure. I will introduce by sharing my screen. And this is oh, what I'm going to talk goodness. about. Um, I might have to try to... Well, you can't see all the names, but uh, maybe I can line it up better. But uh, Yeah, so, you can see everyone's name. It's pretty good. Pretty okay. good. Okay. Right, so this is the show I went to on... Uh, Saturday night. Nice. Um, yeah, Adrian Ballou, Tony Levin, Steve Vai, and Danny Carey. Uh, the only one I wasn't familiar with is Danny Carey, who is the drummer for the band Tool. Wow. And yeah. then playing an entire, well, two sets of uh, music from the 1980s King Crimson albums, which the 1980s Crimson, if you aren't totally familiar, was uh, Robert Fripp, of course, um, Adrian Ballou, Tony Levin, and uh, Bill Bruford on drums. So we have Steve Vai taking the place of Fripp and Danny Carey taking the place of Bruford. They played um, close to like three, more than three quarters of the music on the three albums from the 80s. Uh, there's Discipline, Beat, and Three of a Perfect Pair. And they, they like I said, they played almost all of that. Um, and I, I, I'm still trying to figure out how to approach the concert because it was, it was so good. I mean, these are all amazing musicians. They played incredibly well together. Uh, I mean, the the original, the King Crimson, there was the whole, especially this, well, King Crimson in general, the whole thing is the musicians playing together. And they were, these guys were able to recapture that. Um, Vi did a great job of playing Robert Fripp's parts um, <laughs> when it was called for. That there are a lot of the songs from this period, Fripp and Blue are basically playing the same guitar lines next to each other on top of each other kind of doing counterpoint and invited that great but then there are other points where they gave him some freedom to do more of his own style um if you're at all familiar with the catalog there's a song on uh discipline called the sheltering sky which is all an instrumental and they basically turned that into a showcase for Vi so he could show off his guitar, you know, pyrotechnics and whatnot. Even though he didn't go overboard with it, but he definitely took over that song and made it his own little showcase. Um I I mean I saw Crimson during those years in the eighties. Yeah. And uh actually I saw them on the their first tour and I, you know, I can't help compare a little bit what I heard then. I think this band rocked a little harder um, because, especially, Bai's background is a little more rock than. I mean, Fripp is definitely a rock player, but he also had his own style. But I think Danny Carey as drummer made a big difference coming from Tool rather than like Bruford came out of Yes, very different drum styles. And uh, if if I would make a single comparison, this band was a bit rocked a little harder, and the old the Crimson was a little more fluid. It seemed just a little more flow to it. Um, not not a huge difference, but uh, that that seemed to me a, a, a definite difference. And they uh, but just like let's like say four amazing musicians playing off each other working together, doing their own little bit. Um, I mean, highlights, again, if you know the material from those albums, uh, especially Discipline. They did Elephant Talk, which is one of the biggest songs from there. They did, uh, um, well, they they closed the main set with um, In Discipline, which is uh, Adrian Blue going on a weird rant about something that he never tells you what it is. <laughs> oh. um, they threw in a couple of old like 70s crimson tunes which the 80s band did too um they closed the first set with large tongues and aspect 
which I think oh, every single version geez. of Crimson there has been has played some version of that since it was originally released. And then they opened their encore with Red, um, which is one of the hardest rock songs from the 70s, Crimson. Um, anyway, it was it was an absolutely amazing show. I, uh, I do have to, okay, talking about Lark's Tongues and Aspect, I have to mention the show I saw in the mid 80s, which was uh, Robert Fripp and the League of Crafted Guitarists. He had a guitar school back in the 80s and taught people to play guitar like him. And he took some of his students out on tour. And what it was, was it was 20 acoustic guitarists on stage. Wow. And they did, at that point, Fripp had, been, had done his Frippertronics with tape loops. And so these acoustic guitarists imitated the effect of tape loops by picking up the same lines of guitar and building on top of them. But to close out their show, they played Lark's Tongues and Aspect on 20 acoustic guitars. Wow. Which was, wow. yeah, that was a wow moment. Crazy. Um, anyway, uh, let me see. Well, I had the tour dates, but um, I think they're only halfway through the tour. Um, so actually, let me do this. Uh, let me just take real quick here and see if I can pull those up. There we go. There we are. Okay. I guess we can just go back to the share and in case you want to try to catch them. So we have, they're in Albany tonight, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio on the 25th. I know this doesn't help you guys, but people Later it does. <laughs> Detroit, Indianapolis, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, they are coming back oh, to California. Humphreys in San Diego. Sold out. I, I, looked, out. I, I looked it up it. right away. Uh, Los Angeles at the United Theater on Broadway. Hmm, I think. Thousand Arcs, Bank of America. Thousand hey, Oaks. there's one that's not listed. I found one that's not listed on there. Really? Yep. It's at uh, the Yamava Theater, which is in Highland. It's a suburb of San Bernardino. And oh, wow. There. Yeah, kind of weird. They're there Sunday, November 10th. Okay. No, that's the United Theater. That's the United Theater. I'm sorry. Okay. What day are they in uh, San Bernardino at uh, Highland? That's December 18th. December. December. Okay. Oh, December 18th. Well, yeah. It's a so they're, they're just oh, there. We go Highland Theater. Oh, there it is. It's right. It's listed last. Tucson, Albuquerque, and I. The story I heard was they started out the tour with like 20 dates, and tickets just sold so crazy that they've added all these other dates. And they looked like, honestly, they looked like they were having fun. They were enjoying okay. playing stuff. I, I would say so. I mean, maybe by the time they get to San Bernardino, they'll be sick of it. But <laughs> if you can catch them, I highly, highly recommend it. Hmm. I'm looking at the tickets for San Bernardino. They look pretty, re actually reasonable considering how much concert tickets cost these days. Oh, yeah. We, we paid $100 each to for our yeah, ticket. Yeah. And it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cool. Nice. You, Murray, that was what we were waiting to hear. 